We are going to be discussing how you can short Luna on Mars, which is a brand new money market protocol that just launched on Terra. But for starters, welcome to Crypto Saver. So why on God's green earth would you want to short Luna? Well, there are, there are a couple of reasons for that. The first being, you just want to take a quick trade. You just saw Luna skyrocket 20% over 12 hours. You think it's going to reverse a little bit? Why not short it? Why not short it? Maybe pick up a few points here or there. The second reason, maybe you want to hedge out a Luna position that is currently staked. As we know, if we stake our Luna, we have to wait 21 days to unbond it. So what if Luna skyrockets 50%? You're looking at your PL, it's massive, but you can't take those profits simply because you have to unbound your Luna. You got to wait 21 days to do so. So what can you do? You can box in your position. You can short an equivalent amount of Luna, and if you do so, you would lock in the current price that Luna is trading at if you do so. Now, the third reason it's a bit tricky. It really depends on what country you are, and it is something that you might want to talk to of an actual tax professional. But this comes down to basically locking in your current profits on Luna while pushing out when you'd want to realize those profits. So we know that in many countries, the moment you sell your Luna, you gotta, you have to, those are realized gains. You got to pay profit on it. And in many countries, there's usually a different tax table for if you have realized profits that occur within one year of opening up a position and a different set of tax tables if you wait a whole year at a minimum, right? Short-term and long-term long -term taxes. Well, again, you got to check with your local tax professional, but it does seem that within crypto, you might be able to kind of, I think it's referred to as like selling into the box when it comes to opening up a short position to simply defer when you would realize the profits on your long position. Now, the fourth reason, there are various yield farming strategies that you can employ. And if you're able to neutralize your exposure of the price of Luna, it can really benefit you with those strategies. So I've covered multiple times on this channel, a way for you to basically short Luna on KuCoin. And while you do so, you play on that Luna to be Luna little swap difference that occurs to try to accumulate more Luna. And by us shorting Luna while also holding Luna and swapping into B Luna and back and forth, we're able to kind of take advantage of that 2 to 3% spread every 21 days without being worried about Luna crashing on us. Well, this is another way of shorting Luna. So this works well for that strategy. On top of that, maybe you're currently in the Luna UST liquidity pool. The yield is great. Well, why not short an equivalent amount of Luna? That way you're just realizing the rewards from that liquidity pool, but you're not so worried about Luna crashing down in price. So let's finally head into Mars. Now, we're going to be focusing on the Red Bank. And again, Mars just came out last week. There isn't too much going on. But there's two sides here. There's my deposits and my borrowings. This is very simple. For you to be able to borrow, which we have to, by the way, to go short, you have to deposit a collateral on the left-hand side. Right now, there's only two sets of collateral that are allowed, which is either UST or Luna. On the flip side, we can borrow UST or we could borrow Luna. Now, pay attention to the APYs here. If we deposit UST, we would receive a 0.04% APY for our UST being deposited on the deposit side. Um, but when it comes to borrowing, if we wanted to borrow Luna, we would pay a 1.17% borrowing rate. Obviously, that's an annual rate. Now, these rates will change. If there's a demand for more borrowing of Luna, that rate will go up. The same thing on the deposit side. If more people are borrowing UST, then the amount of yield that we're being paid for the UST that we deposited, our return there would also increase. So here's the game plan. We have UST that's deposited. I have 10 UST that's deposited right now. I'm going to take that 10 UST. I am going to use it to borrow Luna. We're going to borrow that Luna. And the moment we have that Luna in our wallet, we are going to sell it. And that is basically how you create a short position. So if you want to follow along, just make sure you have something deposited on the left hand side as collateral. Now I have 10 UST and that is what we are going to be using here. From here, we are going to head over and click on borrow Luna. Now, there's also a toggle option here when it comes to borrowing. Now, we have to understand something here. How much can we borrow? What is our liquidation risk? Well, these are all things that you should definitely keep in mind. So if you are using UST as your collateral, you can borrow as much as 75% of how much UST you had provided as collateral. So if you deposited the $10 of UST, you can borrow up to $7.50 at its max. When it comes to li getting liquidated, if you're using UST again, well, you'd get liquidated if the asset that you're borrowing 
becomes 85% of the collateral that you put down, right? So if we did a maximum borrowing of 75%, well, we're basically, we only have 10% points of margin before we get liquidated. So I personally probably would not recommend you to use that full maximum borrowing power. So when you look at this toggler here, and when you go to 100%, Understand that 100% represents a 75% LTV, okay? So we're maxed out at 100%, but that means we are borrowing 75% um, of what we provided as collateral. In this case, it actually it's at $7.43, even though it should be $7.50. I'm not sure why that difference there exists, but it's almost at 75%. Now, as I said, I do not recommend that. So let's bring this down to the point that we are borrowing about half the value. So there you go. Notice when that, when that almost five dollars so we're borrowing half of um, our the, the worth of our collateral and in this case if you're borrowing half of it well with ust you'd only get liquidated if luna were to go up 70 percent in value from this point on and just so you understand how that math is done it's pretty simple but i'm just going to show it to you real quick so we know we get liquidated when the asset that we borrowed is at 85 percent of the collateral that we put down so we could put down 85 percent here and we're also using only 50 percent of what our collateral is actually worth right so let's take this and we're going to subtract 50 out of it. So 35 is the number that we have. What we will do from that point on, we're just simply going to take 35 and we are going to divide that by the 50 the percent that we put down. And that gets us 0.7. And that actually represent, represents 70%, okay? So we can withstand a 70% move in Luna before we get liquidated right now if we were to borrow this much Luna. And that particular amount is 0 0.055 Luna. So let's do that. Let's, let's borrow it. Let's put the transaction through. I'm going to hit on borrow and we are going to post. And while this waits and loads, if you're enjoying this content so far, just give me a thumbs up, show the video a little bit of love. But there you go. The transaction has gone through. Let's click on close and we are going to bring up Terra Station. Now, before I made this video, I had zero Luna sitting in my wallet. Uh, right now, you can see now that I have 0 0.055 Luna worth $4.96. All of that matches up. We go into our history here and we will see that this Luna went into my wallet. Okay. So I was able to borrow this Luna. So what would I do right now if I was short Luna? Well, I would go and I would sell it. So let's go. I just want, I just want you guys to see all these steps here. We're going to go. We're going to select. Let's just uh, select Astro here. Let's flip this around. Select all the Luna in our wallet. So we are collecting, as it says here, we are collecting $4.95 for this Luna. And just verify everything's okay. We are going to hit on submit and we are going to post it. It's successful. So that's it. We borrowed that Luna and now we sold it. We are officially short Luna because here's the deal. If we ever want to close this position right now, this borrowed position, I'm just going to refresh Mars for us right now. So here is our borrowed position. Okay. When we have, when we have to close this position out, we are not going to be providing $4.96 to close out this position. No, we have to provide the exact Luna that we borrowed. Okay. And that's an important point because if you are short, you hope, and it rounds, it rounds it out for us here, but you hope that this 0.05 Luna is going to be worth less than what we were just able to sell it for. We were able to sell this Luna for $4 and what, 95 cents? Well, if Luna does go down in value, then that 0 0.05 Luna might actually only be worth $4 or $3.50, right? In that case, we can buy it off the market and once we have that 0 0.05 Luna in our wallet, we come back here and we just repay the loan. And then we are able to pocket that difference, right? So if we pocketed $4.95, but we bought back the Luna for, let's say, just $4, well, in that case, we pocketed $0.95 cents from, from this whole exercise here. But let's just go full circle. So let's say, you know, we speed up a little bit and let's say time comes and you want to close out that position. So let's first head over into our Terra Station wallet. Let's find out exactly how much Luna we have to grab back. We are going to select all of this. I'm going to go back to swap. Let's see. I'm just going to paste this over here to see if we're going to get somewhat close to it. We need a little bit more. Probably the fees are kind of pushing it forward. So let's just kind of dancing with it a little bit. 99 will probably be the, it'll do the trick. Yeah, so that's going to do the trick. Now, Luna could be going up in value right now as I'm doing. Let's just keep that in mind. So I, I'm being short, but I'm, I might actually be losing money if Luna is going up. But we're going to spend this and we are going to buy back. Let's go to Astroport actually. And we are going to buy back this Luna that we need to close out our short position because this is what you're going to be doing in the future if you're going to be utilizing this. Let's click on post. Okay, so now it's successful uh, for 
0.99 is what we had to pay. Uh, let's refresh the page here, click here, and we can click on repay. Now this repay option will not be available to you, by the way, until you actually have the Luna in your wallet, okay? So if you have zero Luna, if you just sold it out, you have nothing, you will, you will not see this option until you have some sort of Luna in your wallet. Only then it would repay up here. But we click on repay. Click on repay, and so it says here, we borrowed this much, let's move this all the way over. And now let's click on repay, and we'll click on post. Transaction successful, click on close once again, and that is it. That is it, we could just refresh the page to just verify things. But we no longer have that borrowed position. It even says here, you don't have any borrowed assets so far. So we close things out. Now obviously we probably didn't make anything, we lost money probably for anything just from the swap fees and so forth. But if you were to short Luna, that is what you'd be doing. You'd be borrowing that Luna, you'd be selling it right away, and you'd hope that in the future, you can buy that Luna for cheaper off the market, and you'd come right back here, and you'd simply repay that debt. Now, I would say it's important to kind of get comfortable with this, because as time goes by, Mars will have more assets within Red Bank. So right now, it's only Luna USD. They plan on having more coins from Terra here. So you could do the same strategy there, right? That if you kind of want to maybe hedge yourself in some liquidity pool that you're involved, or maybe you want to defer some profits taking from maybe you're holding A and C or so forth. So just get comfortable with this, understand how it works. I think it's be a very powerful thing to do. Now I get it. Um, there's a lot of centralized exchanges that do allow you to also short many assets, right? You could also short uh, Luna, you could short A and C, you could short Mirror, just all of those on KuCoin and also on Binance, I believe. There are some downsides and plus sides to it. One of the plus sides I could think about it is that you could actually leverage yourself up considerably easier uh, using a centralized exchange if you did want to go short. Um, in our case, as you could see, we can't really borrow that much based on our collateral and the liquidation mark is pretty tight and all. There's a lot more leniency when it comes to centralized exchanges. The big downside of using a SEX though is the fact that uh, the fees to borrow tend to be much greater. You usually have two options. You could either short a perpetual contract, but in doing so, very often you might get into a time period where the funding rate uh, is against the short the short people, right? People that are shorting. Or if you were to borrow that from like a lending market, let's say within KuCoin or Binance, you'd pay like a, an interest rate that might be as high as 50 to 70% annually. So I feel like as, as Red Bank adds assets on, onto the platform, you might actually get better rates from just shorting them here as opposed to a centralized exchange. With that being said, if you haven't had a chance to show the video some love, please do so. I greatly appreciate it. You can also check out this video next if you just want to see more of my content. But with that being said, thank you for watching and have a great day.